So, do you have a Steam Deck or are you thinking about getting one? Have you tried running Windows on this thing? Or you've just had compatibility issues with some of your favorite games on Steam OS? Well, today I'm going to talk about how on the Steam Deck I primarily use Windows when I'm playing it. Now, I do dual boot Steam OS, but most of the time I'm on Windows. Now, before we get started, if you like this video, I would be very grateful if you would hit that like and subscribe button, and you can follow me on Twitter at AVGHaloGamer. Now, the Steam Deck is an interesting device because when it came out, you know, it, it runs SteamOS, which is a great operating system, and I have nothing against Linux. I work with Linux on a professional basis, but I have not hidden the fact that I use Windows on this thing. I even put out a video a little while ago about it. Now, first I want to talk about why would you want to use Windows? So there's a few reasons for that. As great as SteamOS is, there are definitely some compatibility issues with, with games, particularly once you leave the Steam ecosystem. You know, Steam, anything you download from Steam works great with Proton. Well, not anything, but it handles a lot of that for you. But if you have any games from the Epic Game Store, or particularly, and if you're following me, you most likely fall within this group, if you want to play games through Xbox Game Pass. Now, you can stream xCloud to your Steam Deck, but it's not the same experience. It's not running natively, and especially if you want to play games like Halo, it's not an ideal experience. Doable, but that extra latency just isn't worth it. So there are good reasons that you would want to run Windows on the Steam Deck. And I think that there are also good reasons that, you know, two of the biggest, most popular Steam Deck alternatives that have come out, have come out recently, like the Legion Go or the Asus ROG Ally, are running Windows. They're not running SteamOS. And of course, there's the fact that about a year ago, I tested the performance difference between SteamOS Windows 10 and a debloated Windows 10 instance. And I got better performance and better battery life in Halo Infinite. Now, I'll talk a little bit later about what I mean by debloated instance, but that's still an important metric. And sure, I didn't test in other games other than Halo Infinite, but I don't really have any reason to believe that other very resource intensive games wouldn't have a similar performance benefit. Now, this is not going to be a super comprehensive video. This is meant to be covering some basics and I'm focusing on the UI here. Now, Windows is a flawed operating system. I personally, I don't like Windows. Uh, I use it as a necessity, but not because it's my operating system of choice. My operating system of choice is actually a Mac. On a professional standpoint, when I'm working with servers, it's Linux all the way. But for me, I care about what the performance is while I'm playing the game. I care about being able to play the games. It's a, I feel the same way with consoles. I might prefer an Xbox. I sure as hell bought a PS5 at launch. I wanted to play those games. I wanted to play Ratchet and Clank. So for me, what games I can play, what the experience is while I'm playing the game, ultimately is higher than any of my opinions regarding um, the operating system. Why do I care about the operating system when I'm playing a game? I don't see it. I don't really interact with it. So to me, that is what's most important. But like I was saying, Windows is a flawed operating system, particularly on a device like this. It is not optimized for a screen this small. It is really only just barely optimized for touch and it wasn't meant that the primary way of interacting with the operating system is essentially a controller there is a touch screen on here but again windows is not the most touch friendly os which makes sense most people who use windows interact with it with a keyboard and mouse so that means that we need a better way of using windows on here if we have already decided that the compatibility issues or Game Pass or just wanting to not worry about where your games are from is an important factor to you, then we need to make Windows work on a device like this. 
let's figure out how we're going to do that. Now, let's talk about what my setup is on Windows before we dive into this. Because I want to make an important caveat here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, when I was doing the testing in Halo Infinite on my Steam Deck, I was using a de-bloated Windows 10 installation. By de-bloated, I mean I ran a script that got rid of a lot of things that I didn't need on Windows for a dedicated gaming device. Since making that video, I have, however, moved off of that. I am now using Windows 10 LTS. This is a special version of Windows that is meant for enterprise. And what that means is it comes with very little. It doesn't even have the, the Windows Store installed by default. Now, those things can be very easily installed. For example, I downloaded the Xbox app and it downloaded the Windows Store for me. It did prompt me, but a lot of things are missing here. It is also not the most up-to-date Windows version. It doesn't get updates constantly and you're currently stuck on Windows 10, which for me on the Steam Deck is a non-issue. I don't need the latest features from Windows 11 because Steam Deck, to my knowledge, can't handle them. It's not like we're about to do ray tracing on the Steam Deck. So I wanted to make that important caveat because I'm going to be talking about performance in this video. Now, this is not a super in-depth performance video, but I feel like just to be fully upfront about what my setup is, I need to be open about that information. So I wanted to make that important caveat because... I'm going to be talking about performance and other things that are impacted by my choice of operating system on this. If you're running a standard Windows 10 or 11 installation on your Steam Deck, your base CPU and memory usage is already going to be higher than mine before you even start playing your games. I do also want to mention that I am using the Steam Deck tools on here. What that means is the Steam Deck tools is a suite of tools for Windows. I, however, only use the debugging software and I use the controller. I have disabled the analytics. You are going to see it in the video because I turned it on specifically for this video, um, but normally I don't use it. So focusing on the UI, as I mentioned, working with Windows on here sucks. So I found a piece of software called Playnight, which is a game launcher. Now, Play Night lets you, uh, it can give you a full screen application, very similar to Steam, but Steam, I found, gives has some trouble with running games from other launchers. Uh, it is possible, but I always had trouble with it, so I just gave up on that. So that's what Play Night is. Play Night is not an alternative to Steam. It is not an alternative to Epic Game Store. It still uses all of those stores. You actually have to have them installed if you're going to use them but it just combines all of your games into a single full screen view. So let's talk about how you install Play Night on the Steam Deck. Now this installs like any other application. There isn't really too much here to go over, but we're still gonna talk about it a little bit. Now, obviously I search for Play Night. Now I can already see the comment. Yes, I'm using Bing. Yes, I'm using Microsoft Edge. Again, this is a gaming focused device. I had no reason to install Google Chrome or change my default search engine. It does one thing, and that's play video games. So that's why it's Bing and, and Microsoft Edge. So we're going to fast forward through the actual installation of this. So once you actually get it installed, you then need to start setting it up. And there are some basic setup steps that you need to do. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm only focusing on Xbox Game Pass. But when you first set it up, you choose what stores you want to use and you log into all of them so the application can track all of the games you have. I'm cutting out the part where I put in my Xbox credentials, but here you actually have to log into your Xbox app. Now, obviously that's probably will give some people pause, but Play Night is open source. Now, after I log in and authenticate with Xbox, I actually mistakenly told it to track Xbox games, which doesn't really have any value on here. Like, why do I want to see the Xbox games on here? I'm sure someone wanted this feature. I don't really understand why. So later on, I actually disable this feature, but I would recommend just don't turn it on unless for some reason you really want to see Xbox games that you can't play. So once you finish the initial setup and you put in all your stores, it's going to take a little bit for it to start showing you data. You're going to see in the top right that it is scanning all of your stores. Now, as you can tell, this UI doesn't scale super well to the Steam Deck but we're not gonna be using this UI 
once we get it set up. And we'll be getting to that in just a moment. So we're gonna be changing some default play not settings. Now, these are the settings that I use. So it is completely up to you whether or not you wanna do these yourself. Now, I would highly recommend using play night in full screen mode. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna set play night to start when Windows starts and enter full screen mode when it starts. That way you briefly see Windows and then you're in play night, which should serve most of the time that you're playing games on here. The other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a view to only see your installed games. Now, I don't understand why this isn't a view that's already baked in, especially in full screen mode. Like, why, why do I need to make this filter myself? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, but we're gonna do it. So we're gonna create the filter and then we're just gonna save it as installed. Um, that way we can use it later. So now if you exit Play Night and you relaunch it, it will launch into full screen mode. And as you can tell, this is a mode that looks very similar to a, any other full screen game mode. You see your games and you can easily select them. So there are a couple of settings that we wanna change here though. Now, one of the weird things about Play Night is there are some settings that are duplicated between the normal UI and the full screen UI, even if the setting itself is identical. So you might try to change a setting in the normal UI, but it doesn't affect the full screen UI. I don't really understand that, but I guess, you know, maybe there was a good reason for it. So there's a couple settings that once you're in the full UI that I would recommend changing. If you go into settings, you can see show battery status and percent, which considering this is a mobile device, I highly recommend. That way, when you're about to launch a game, you have some idea of how much battery life you have. And the second one is the darken not installed games. I do not understand how this is not default turned on because I find it really confusing when I go look through my games and it's like everything is bright and there's no easy way for me to see what games are not installed. So yeah, so I highly recommend turning on this setting. Obviously, again, personal preference, but I highly recommend it. Now, one of the things I really like about Play Night is the fact that you can find games you don't have from the Play Night UI. Now, it's not perfect. So Play Night is gonna send you to the store that your game is from. So when I go to Disney Dreamlight Valley, I click install, it launches the Microsoft Store. Now, you can go into the Xbox app and change the settings so that it will instead go to the Xbox app, which I highly recommend you do, um, but that's personal preference. Now, the big thing that I was worried about when I was gonna try this on my Steam Deck was performance. The Steam Deck is already kind of tight on resources, so I was really worried about, you know, when Play Night's running in the background, how much memory and CPU was it gonna use? And I was very happy to see that it's only using about 1.7% of my CPU and about 150 megabytes of RAM. That's not nothing, obviously, and there are obviously some games that really tap out the CPU, but I found that it really doesn't impact my performance and the benefit of having Play Night outweighs that. One of the things I might be interested in looking at some point is, do I still have the performance gains that I had before with this running? Yeah, I think that'd be an interesting test. Right now, I think the trade-off is worth it because ultimately compatibility is a major driving force for me to use Windows. And the last thing I wanna call out here is how much you can do from within Play Night. From Play Night, when you go into the system menu, you can obviously turn off Play Night, but you can also restart and shut down your Steam Deck. So you don't actually have to go back to Windows to turn it off. You don't have to hold down the power button. You can do all of that from Play Night, and that's awesome. So with all of that installed and all of the configuration things that I would encourage you to do done, let's talk about what Play Night isn't and where I think it falls a little bit short. As I mentioned earlier, Play Night does not install the games for you. It isn't like Heroic Launcher in that case. Heroic Launcher I use on the Steam OS side, or I tried to use on the Steam OS side for installing Epic Game Store games on Steam OS. That is not what Play Night is. You have to have all of the launchers that you want installed. And uh, if you don't have them installed, in some cases it can still pull in the data, but you obviously can't install it. Uh, that also means that you have to have multiple things running in the background. So if you, you know, that means that you could have a ton of launchers running in the background. Now for me, I don't even have Steam installed on the Windows side. That's probably gonna change for me really soon, but 
I only use the Windows side for Game Pass, and it just happens that the games I play on Game Pass are most of the games I play on my Steam Deck. Not all of them, but most of them. So the big question is, does this alleviate all my problems with Windows? And no, it doesn't. And that's not Play Night's fault. It can't. Unless Play Night was a complete reskin of Windows, it's not really possible. Windows still is not made for a device like this. So yeah, we saw those leaks of a handheld gaming focused uh, Windows UI, but we don't know if that's ever gonna happen and it probably won't look the way that we saw from those leaks. But it does a really good job. It fixes the UI problem, especially once you have the games installed. You're gonna have to leave Play Night to install games. But assuming you use the same games often on your Steam Deck, or you're just not really installing games that often, it still is a better experience than what you had before on Windows with none of the compatibility issues of SteamOS and you can use Game Pass. So do I recommend Play Night? I feel like if you've gotten to this point, you've probably realized that I'm pretty happy with Play Night. I might keep an eye out for alternatives, but this does most of what I wanted from a launcher. Sure, it would be great if it could actually replace Steam, actually replace Epic Games, but even just being a better wrapper around launching and playing games is huge. But of course, there's still the open question of Play Night on Windows 10 or SteamOS. And this is where things get complicated because I am highly technical. I understand how to install these tools. I understand how to use them. And installing Windows on a Steam Deck, while not hard, is not the easiest thing. It's a little weird how you install the drivers. Windows Update is not going to pull a lot of things for you. And there's already been some issues around an outdated driver. Well, I do highly recommend using Windows 10 especially if you can figure out how to get the LTS version, which I'm not going to explain in this video. And if you Google it, you'll find out why. If you can figure out how to install that and you can get Play Night installed, and especially if you can figure out how to properly dual boot, and there are some great guides out there on how to do exactly that, then I do recommend it. It is, it removes any compatibility issues that you need to worry about with playing any game. I've yet to see an experience that a game would run on SteamOS and it wouldn't run on Windows. The only weird catch that I could see with that is if some game has special code in it that only runs on SteamOS to maybe work on a smaller screen. I'm not entirely sure why that would be the case. I recommend it. Keep SteamOS though. You might have some weird game. Obviously, I've not tested every game. Most of what I play on here is Halo. Uh, I do play a few other games. Like I play Kingdom Hearts. Dream Light Valley, which is actually on my Steam OS side, but that's probably going to move very soon. Especially though, if you have Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you're wasting your money if you're buying your game again on Steam just because you want to play it on your Steam Deck. Just install Windows. It is not that bad. And Play Night makes it infinitely better. This was kind of a weird video to put together because there are a lot of people that are adamant about Steam OS. And I get it. Windows has a stronghold on the gaming market. And while I'm all for trying to remove that stronghold, as I said earlier, what I care about is being able to play games. If I have a worse experience playing the game, that isn't a solution to me. That's not how we fix the problem because then we're just pushing people back to Windows. I hope that SteamOS gets better. I hope that Proton becomes better. I hope that Steam makes it easier to leave the Steam store but they're not financially incentivized to do that. And there are competitors like the Legion Go, like the Asus ROG Ally that is putting out Windows devices that are gonna get Steam Deck a run for its money, especially if they can properly optimize the operating system, which is possible with the LTS version. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and you can follow me on Twitter at AVG Halo Gamer. Thank you so much for watching.